Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating the foundations of any portfolio or investment management task or model, that is, how to properly simulate an investment in a selection of stocks you're interested in. And today we're going to cover equal weighted and value weighted portfolios, and most importantly perhaps, the subtle difference between fixed weights and drifting weights assumptions. And uh, it might seem to you that the task is pretty straightforward, what there is to talk about for the whole video. Uh, for example, if you've got a selection of four well-established US stocks like Boeing, Coca-Cola, JP Morgan and Google, and you want to form an equal weighted portfolio of those, then you can just calculate daily returns using the simple formula price today divided by the price yesterday minus one, then drag it across to calculate returns of all four stocks and enforce it throughout the whole sample, and then simply assume that you are allocating one million dollars at the start of your investment period. That is for us start of year 2017, and we're going to simulate it until start of September 2021. So for more than four years, we're going to simulate this investment. And then as we have got equal weights, then the portfolio return is just going to be the simple average of individual stock returns in our selection, in our portfolio. And then we could simply apply the one plus return formula to appreciate our portfolio value holdings throughout every single sample day and then we could bottom back it all the way down and get two million dollars that we'll get out of our one million at the end of the period case closed video is finished isn't it no not necessarily you see this particular assumption that we have just implemented where the return of the portfolio in every single day is simply equal to the sample average of your individual stock returns is the so-called fixed weight assumption and it is heavily used in for example value at risk simulations and there it is warranted because you want to simulate for example a historical value at risk and so on and so forth you want to see how a portfolio with given weights will perform uh, over the course of one day however in investment simulations such an assumption does presume that you rebalance your portfolio back to equal weights, that is, 25% of your portfolio holdings will be Boeing, Coca-Cola, JP Morgan, and Google respectively, every single day. And that's the only way how you can get this particular simple average return throughout the whole period. But that's very unrealistic for a number of reasons. First of all, it's quite hard to do that, simply because no one really does rebalance their portfolio to equal weights every single day. Have you seen an individual investor who does that? And second, it is quite costly because rebalancing your portfolio every day is associated with significant trading fees. A more realistic simulation would involve the so-called drifting weights, and that's what we're going to cover now. For drifting weights, we're first going to define the initial portfolio weights, and as it's an equal weighting scenario, they are equal to one fourth, as we've got four stocks. Then we start with our $1 million invested on the 3rd of January 2017, and we treat our portfolio as a combination of four positions in every single stock. And then we're going to track the changes in those values of those positions across time, and that's how we are going to determine the performance of our more realistic drifting weight portfolio. Our starting positions are quite intuitively going to be equal to the starting portfolio value, and we'll look at the column here, multiplied by the initial portfolio weight. So, quite intuitively and quite obviously, we're investing $250,000 into every of our four stocks at the very start. But then, something interesting is going to happen. As we're not rebalancing at all, we have to track the changes in position values across time. And then, only, we can determine how our portfolio performed. Because, if different stocks appreciate or depreciate to different extents, then their weights in your portfolio are going to change. Imagine if one stock appreciates substantially and the other one depreciates substantially. Then, in the following trading days, 
the weight, the contribution of the first stock in your portfolio is going to be higher than the contribution of the other stock, simply because their values change so much. And that's what we're going to see. But how to implement this tracking of position values across time? Well, quite easy, actually. We can simply, day by day, adjust our portfolio position values to reflect the new market values of our stocks. For Boeing, for example, we can simply divide the position value in the previous day by the price in the previous day, effectively uh, giving us the number of stocks we hold in Boeing, and then multiply it by the new Boeing share price, giving us the updated position value. And that's what we can apply throughout all of our stocks, or all our positions, equivalently, and across the whole sample period. So we have enforced this formula and drag it across and see that our position in Boeing has appreciated, whereas all three other positions have depreciated slightly. And that would mean that the weight our portfolio has in Boeing would increase, whereas these weights could also change and most likely they will decrease. And I'll discuss what contributes to the fact whether weights are increasing or decreasing in a little bit. So most importantly now, though, we have to calculate the new portfolio value in the next trading day by summing up the updated position values, simply because our portfolio is nothing more and nothing less than a combination of those four positions. And you could generalize it to any number of positions, any number of stocks or other assets you want to hold. So we sum up those position values and get slightly in excess of 1 million. In the first day, those two values match exactly, but then those would diverge and they would diverge more and more significantly as time passes and our portfolio weights deviate further from the fixed weights. They would drift away, justifying the title drifting weights. And for return, we could simply now study our portfolio value dynamics and divide portfolio value today by the portfolio value yesterday and subtract new one. And here, still, in the first day, those results are equivalent, but then the discrepancy would kick in. And in terms of the differences, the drift of portfolio weights, we could simply divide updated positions onto the updated portfolio value, locking the column here, and dragging it across all four stocks. And we see that, indeed, the weight of Boeing has increased slightly, and values uh, of weights for other three stocks decrease slightly. And what happens is, if the return of a stock in a particular day is higher than the return of a portfolio, then its weight increases and vice versa. If the return of a stock is lower than the return of the portfolio, then its weight decreases, simply because it's a relative thing. And we can exactly verify it over here, as the return of Bogan was higher than the return of the portfolio, and returns of those three stocks were lower than the return of the portfolio. The good thing is that now, having implemented this logic in Excel, we can simply bottom right click it all the way down and calculate our drifting weight portfolio values, returns and weights and positions throughout the whole period until September 2021. And we see that there is some notable discrepancy between the realized value, the final value of our fixed weight and drifting weight portfolios. And graphically, we can see how the deviation, how the discrepancy accumulates with time. And most notably, where it started being apparent is when the market plummeted in March and April 2020, when some stocks plunged by a lot, some stocks plunged by a little, and then the subsequent recovery further deviated our drifting weights from the 25% they were initially. And we can see it over here as well. By the end of our simulation, the weight we have in Google has increased from 25% to almost 44% almost half of our exposure is to a single stock. And that's something that very few investment managers would tolerate. And that's why rebalancing is so important, especially when you're implementing some sophisticated strategies and you're implementing drifting weight portfolios. And uh, that's something we're gonna cover in the next video. But today, what we are interested in is to see that indeed, the difference between fixed weights and drifting weights can be material. and on larger timescales, it could become even more so. However, there is another weighting scheme that we seek to cover today, and that's 
value weights. And value weights do overcome some of the issues that um, equal weights have in terms of this large discrepancy between uh, equal between fixed and drifting weights. So here we have got uh, our market caps calculated for four uh, of our sample companies. And what we need to do in value weighting is to allocate capital towards those four stocks proportionate to their market caps. And that is the uh, go-to technique for weighting your stocks in a passive strategy. And uh, the distinction between fixed and drifting will actually tell us why. Here, we have got uh, all of our four stocks being quite large. They are all large caps. However, the differences in those four market caps can be substantial. For example, the market cap of Google at the start is almost six times as high as the market cap of Boeing, the smallest company in our four company selection. And we have calculated those market caps by simply multiplying stock prices onto shares outstanding of those companies in respective years. And those can be easily uh, obtained from Yahoo Finance Financials. So I'm not going to dedicate too much time to that. Uh, the only uh, um, I need to mention here is that uh, this particular figure number of shares is reported in uh, 1000 shares. So if we want, for example, to calculate uh, market caps in billion uh, dollars, then we have to divide it by 1 uh, million, simply because when we uh, multiply uh, the share price into 1000 shares, we have got $1000. And to get uh, from 1000s of dollars to billions of dollars, we have to divide by a million. So straightforward enough. But now we have to implement exactly the same thing, the, the fixed and drifting weights portfolios, uh, by uh, weighting our uh, stocks according to their market caps. In terms of the fixed weight, here the sum product function is quite handy. So we could simply use the sum product function and weigh our stock returns by initial market caps, by market caps in the previous day, and then divide it by the sum of said market caps. And then again, we can apply portfolio value uh, scaling with returns, just multiplied by one plus return, and then automatically get all the way down. And we can see that a value weighted portfolio has appreciated to 2.6 million over the course of uh, four and a half years approximately, uh, if we apply the fixed uh, weighting scheme. For drifting weights here, we can simply apply this particular procedure, we can divide the market cap of an individual stock here it is Boeing by the sum of all four market caps and again it needn't be four it can be generalized to any number of stocks or assets so here we just sum up four market caps and being careful lock in the columns here so that we always refer to the same four columns that's quite crucial to calculate the value weights and we can drag it across to get all four of our value weights and uh, simply because uh, the market cap of Google initially has been six times approximately higher than the market cap of Boeing. Weights do scale accordingly. So we have almost 50% in Google and roughly 8% in Boeing and the rest is distributed between Coca-Cola and JP Morgan. And now we can start calculating our positions and uh, start to implement how they're changing with time. So for Boeing, uh, we will just multiply the portfolio value with the locked column onto the portfolio weight of Boeing, the value weight of Boeing, and get $83,000 approximately, and get the same uh, logic applied for all four stocks, and then use the same formulas to uh, track the changes in market values of said positions across time. So divide this position value onto the starting price of Boeing to get the number of shares we have got in Boeing, and then multiply by the new share price of Boeing to mark this position to market if you wish. And then we can enforce that for all four stocks. Then we can finally figure out what is the new portfolio value. Uh, again, for the first day, uh, it should match the fixed weight value. And this is a good sanity check to figure out that you've done everything correctly. Then for the drifting weight portfolio return, we calculate it directly based on the portfolio value differences. And finally, we can see how our weights have changed. So divide the position in Boeing onto the new portfolio value, lock the column here, and drag that across. And finally, 
button like click this all the way down and see how the results are different. So for the value weighted uh, situation, our difference in performance for fixed weight and drifting weight portfolios is not as apparent as for the equal weighted case. And we can see it and double check it even graphically. The uh, deviation is that, the discrepancy is there, however it's not that material as we have seen over here. Why is it the case? And that is the reason why value-weighted portfolios are the go-to technique in passive asset management. That's simply due to the fact that a fixed weight and a drifting weight value-weighted portfolios are not that different from each other due to the fact that if you seek to expose yourself to a particular stock in the proportion of the stock market cap in relation to the market cap of your whole portfolio, then this would also differ with time as stocks appreciate and depreciate. And that allows you to get the exposure that's similar to the exposure of the market, overall market risk. And uh, the only source of discrepancy here would be the changes in um, shares outstanding, simply because sometimes a market cap of a company can change because they issue more shares or they buy back some shares. And that's the only source of discrepancy here. Another source of discrepancy when you're investigating total returns would be dividends and the assumption of reinvesting dividends, keeping dividends, uh, doing something else with dividends. But as we are here concerned with share prices and only share prices, this source of discrepancy is not present. And here we can see the benefit of value-weighted investing even more clearly. And that's all there is for value-weighted versus equal-weighted portfolios, and more importantly, the subtle discrepancy between fixed and drifting weights. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions in videos for business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.